everybody welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome my name is Chris today's video is all about luxury in all of my other videos I do really try to show a smattering of items from all price ranges and I've done several videos basically focused on really affordable products. Today is all about luxury products, and I've only done one video previously focusing on my luxury perfumes. I'm going to be focusing on the whole look of luxury, and when I say that, I mean quiet luxury from my clothes to my makeup, jewelry, and perfumes. So that is what you will be seeing, and that's what I'm featuring in today's video. The term quiet luxury really kind of popped up everywhere maybe around a year ago as a trend. I actually see it as a lifestyle that I embrace as I get older, as a middle-aged female. I want to spend less of my money on trendy items that I may not wear year after year. I may not even own or like, you know, two, three years down the road. I'd rather spend a little bit more upfront on quality pieces that I will enjoy year after year that will last, that are well-made, understated, elegance, high-quality, minimalistic, pieces that are sophisticated and timeless. They are not flashy, they are not trendy, so I will be pairing my outfits with my jewelry and the perfumes. For example, this jacket that I'm wearing today was an investment piece for me. I bought it for a christening or a baptism, I wanna say like 10, maybe 15 years ago. I spent more on it than I typically do on my clothing, but here I am. 10, 15 years later wearing this beautiful jacket that I would wear to any nice occasion. My makeup is my higher end makeup and the jewelry that I will be showing during the video is absolutely epitomizes this quiet luxury. I'm going to take this part of the video showing you the beautiful jewelry pieces that I am wearing, the epitome of quiet luxury and this part of the video is in collaboration with the brand ideal. In the almost four years I've been doing YouTube, it'll be four years um, in December, I believe, I've only accepted three collaborations. And for me to accept a collaboration, I have to completely believe in the product and also it would be something that I would purchase myself. So why did I agree to do a collaboration with this company? And why do I believe in the product so much? Well, first of all, they are they're very, very good quality, but they start at a fair price. So everything is 14 karat gold and they are conflict free. And their prices, I wanna say some of their prices start in the 200s. The diamonds that they use are lab grown. Let me tell you, a lab grown diamond and a diamond that was made a billion years ago, they are the same thing. The only difference is how they were created. And I'm really not interested anymore in mined gemstones now that I've become aware of what goes into it. And I only wear lab generated gemstones now, the only exception is my wedding ring because it's 20 years old. So that moves into the sustainable part, what I like about this company. So their products are sustainable. They are not mine, they are not a limited resource. They are modular. You can start off small depending on what your budget is and you can add pieces on in the future. And the combinations are endless. So for example, I'm wearing the 14 karat gold, very dainty necklace and I've paired that with my initial C and it has the small diamond right next to it. So all of the initials will get that little, cute little diamond associated with it. I've got the, I wanna say the medium diamond stud and I have paired it with the jacket. It's called the Lucia. They have several different beautiful jackets. You can wear them with the jacket, without the jacket. The combinations are endless and the items that I plan on purchasing myself, I want to purchase another set of the diamond solitaires for my second piercing. I haven't decided if I'm going with the medium size that I have now or the, I think it's the petite size. I will also be purchasing a jacket called the J jacket. I will put a picture up there, maybe for Christmas, maybe for my birthday, we'll see, but it is a beautiful jacket, minimalistic elegance. You can wear it on a daily basis or very dressed up. It's something that I could see at work, maybe when I felt really jazzy or at a black tie event, it would be beautiful. And I will be purchasing the initial in H for my daughter for her big birthday. She has a big birthday next April. So those will be the products that I will be purchasing for me and my family. So I'm incredibly grateful to Ideal for allowing this collaboration, for letting me pick out these beautiful pieces to show you and sponsor this part of the video. And I will leave all the links and information down below. And with that, let's get into the perfumes. So it's really interesting when I was gathering fragrances for this video, I wasn't thinking of vanilla, but when I look at the perfumes that I've picked out, 
A lot of the perfumes here are vanilla based. So vanilla doesn't always mean smelling like a snack. Only for the winter time, I have some beautiful, timeless, elegant, classic quality perfumes that have a vanilla base. But I'm gonna start off with um, some fragrances that have fig. There's something about fig or that smell like fig that just seems very classic and elegant and timeless, kind of like that quiet luxury to me. And I'm gonna start with a perfume that I wore, I wanna say I wore this a couple days ago to work. Now this is quiet elegance as long as you are easy on the trigger. This is Parisian Musk by Maitrier Premier. I was really, really shocked when I found out that this does not contain fig because I always thought it was basically a fig musk perfume and it's not it's very much a musk fragrance and it has this beautiful ambrette which is in a botanical musk so it smells different and there's something about ambrette that's just very very smooth it borders on being a little bit green a little bit vegetal but it's very very clean very very smooth and the notes in here to me However they're combined, smell like a beautiful green fig. It's got a little bit of that ambroxan, and it's that ambroxan, I think, that causes this thing to project and last like crazy. So as long as you don't go heavy on the trigger, this will be very, very appropriate for that aesthetic. A little bit of amber in the base, and it's a very, very clean, very fresh, very Parisian style fragrance that I love. I would typically pair this with something maybe a little bit more casual. I could do jeans, but a white, you know, a white button down shirt with another structured jacket. Just classic, chic, elegant. Another perfume is a fragrance that I love, but I stopped talking about because I bought it in Italy and I never saw it here um, in the United States. And I found it pop up over on FragranceNet earlier this year and I couldn't believe it. This is my beautiful, Schwa Monami by Greti. It's a special line. This is really the definition of timeless and elegant. It is fig, there's coconut, and there's amber. And it is just a, a beautiful, beautiful scent. I really do get that fig a lot in the sandalwood in the opening. This does not smell like that coconutty tropical drink. It does not smell, you know, like suntan lotion or sunscreen. The sandalwood in here is absolutely stunning and it does have somewhat of a heavy um, amber base, but I still smell that fig. It was interesting. I wore this one time, one time to work. I don't know, just the mood hit me. And I have a male coworker who's really kind of, he's kind of a, he's a very, very smart nerd, but he's interested in teas. He has a lot of this in his office. He has a lot of these very fancy loose teas and those are the only teas that he drinks. He will not drink tea from the hospital. And he smelled me, he came by my office and he said, you smell really good. You smell like sandalwood, but not the cheap kind. <laughs> and I was shocked. I was like, wow, Scott, yeah, this, is, this has sandalwood in it. And he says, it smells really good. I don't know how Scott knows what quality sandalwood smells like, but suffice it to say, he hit the nail on the head that this is an elegant, timeless, sophisticated, beautiful scent that I, oh, Absolutely love. Okay, and I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that one of the more challenging things um, in picking out the perfumes is that I made a rule I couldn't pick more than one scent from a particular house because several houses, they're all about, you know, quality and luxury. So that's what made it a little bit more challenging. Now, I could not have a fragrance video about timeless, elegant, and high quality fragrances without picking a Chanel. And the difficulty was, which Chanel am I going to pick? And the one that I ended up going with is Gabrielle Essence. I have said in a previous video that I'm still, I am really still not a fan of the original Gabrielle. There's something about the way it's the citruses and the florals, they come together. It just, to me, it smelled metallic. It had a metallic type of a scent. And this smells a little bit different than the typical Chanel DNA that you see or that you smell going through or running through a lot of the uh, perfumes in that line. This is very heavily floral, less just like a Chanel perfume. The florals are a little bit lighter. They're a little bit brighter. They're not as powdery. I would absolutely say, you know, you've got the white florals in here, definitely jasmine, maybe a little bit of rose. This has citruses. This has a lot of citruses in it and maybe a little pop of berries. And they don't smell metallic at all when they come together. Not a ton of aldehydes. This is a very crisp, fresh 
floral, but it's very, very professional. When I wear this, I just feel so professional, so chic, so elegant, so put together, so timeless. This is a, this is a perfume. I would describe it chic, classy, and very, very timeless. I really, really have come to adore this fragrance. Um, the one I picked out from Mise en Cire is called Bois Iridescent. So many in this line would qualify for that, that quiet luxury aesthetic. This one is like a citrusy floral sandalwood with a splash of violet leaf. So the sandalwood is very soft. It's a very, very fresh. There's like a little bit of a powdery iris in here. It has some nice freshness at the top. I wanna say it's from Bargamon. Very clean and a subtle touch of that violet leaf. And to me, violet leaf smells like a cucumber. So it has this very fresh, clean, dewy quality to it. The musk in here comes out in the dry down and to me it has a little bit, a little bit of a saltiness, certainly nothing overly salty or sour, but it just has this crystalline quality to it. Um, oh, I just absolutely love it. And again, timeless, elegant, chic, sophisticated, all that in this bottle. So choosing just one perfume from the house of Guerlain was very, very difficult. And I almost chose Angelique Noir, beautiful, timeless, um, green vanilla. I ended up at the last minute as of like five minutes before when I was gathering my perfumes to bring them downstairs. I changed it to this one right here, Queer Beluga. It really does kind of personify this quiet luxury aesthetic. I mean, the prices are absolutely ridiculous. They are definitely investment perfumes for sure. But what makes them so unique is that they are, you know, individualized or personalized. You know, you can really kind of put the bottle together yourself. I chose the top. I chose the cording, the gold cording, the, the little tag here. And um, I personalized the back. I don't know if you can see, but it does say Perfume Nest. And this was one of the most um, expensive bottles I purchased when I first was starting my channel. It was an investment piece to me. And it does personify this quiet luxury to me. It is a Guerlain vanilla, but it is a timeless vanilla because it doesn't smell like an item of food. You're not gonna smell like a cupcake or a donut. You're gonna smell like a classic, beautiful person. I would say lady, but anybody could wear this fragrance, you know. It has that gorgeous Guerlain vanilla that almost borders on being gourmand. It's just the perfect amount of sweetness without going overboard, and it's paired with a beautiful suede accord. So. It doesn't, oh, it doesn't smell like straight up leather. It just has this soft fuzziness to it. It's very powdery and the powdery almost certainly comes from heliotrope. So it is almost, it might be overly powdery for some people. And for that reason, I do think it has a maturity to it, a sophistication to it. I would not want to, I probably wouldn't want to wear this when I was in my teens or maybe even my twenties, but now that I'm a middle-aged female, this really, really appeals to me. Has, um, you know, some a little bit of aldehydes. I don't really pick up on the aldehydes, only in the very, very beginning. It's a little bit fresh, has a little bit of tangerine, but this is all about the beautiful, timeless Guerlain vanilla and a beautiful, beautiful, soft, powdery, smooth, almost silky, soft, like the inside of a thin, leather bag suede and it's just beautiful. It does not last forever and it doesn't project like a beast, but I think it's perfect for this aesthetic for that reason. You know, you're only gonna smell yourself or maybe somebody else coming into your little tight bubble. So it is, you know, it fits that aesthetic perfectly. Another lovely perfume that fits the aesthetic perfectly is one of my favorite perfumes, Santal Basmati. This has some of my very, very favorite notes. It has the Accord. Um, you know, Basmati Rice Accord. It has sandalwood. It has a little bit of cashmere in, which is like being hugged by a, a soft blanket. A little bit of iris. It does have patchouli in the base, but I'm telling you, this patchouli is not like that heavy, earthy patchouli you're thinking. It's it's soft, it's light, and it's airy. It has It has a little bit of spices, maybe a splash, maybe a little bit of incense, but it's certainly not smoky. And it's just beautiful, chic, timeless, elegant, and it does wear lightly. So it does wear lightly and it doesn't last forever, but I absolutely love it and it fits this theme so well. 
Okay, as you can see, I've changed things up a bit. I added another jacket that I bought at least 10 years ago. You cannot buy this anymore. But it still looks beautiful today. It is timeless and elegant and I changed up my... And I'm now wearing two of the diamond studs in each of my piercings and I think it looks really nice. So for this outfit, I would pair my perfumes. I've got some vanillas. Who knew vanilla was so timeless and elegant? But these vanillas certainly are. The first one I'm going to pick is called Black Tie. You don't have to be going to a black tie event to wear this, but you certainly could. I would pair it with something like a lovely jacket like this, dressed up, not dressed down for sure. This is too pretty. This is a beautiful non-gourmand vanilla, almost, but not quite, that's paired with a lovely aura, so it's a little bit powdery and very soft. It's very soft, very elegant, very timeless. I almost get, you know, deep, deep in the background, like a rum-soaked tobacco, the slightest bit of a booziness and nothing overly tobacco and it's certainly not smoky. And I could be imagining it, but I get the slightest hint of those two notes coming together. I mean, this is straight up a soft, elegant, powdery, musky vanilla to its core, um, but it does have um, a little bit of warmth and depth in the base. And I wanna say that the wood in here is cedar, but it doesn't smell like a typical cedar. I would have guessed probably more of a sandalwood because it's so creamy and smooth and it does have um, like a splash of oak moss, but I mean, I barely, barely get it. And it's probably in here to balance out the vanilla because it never becomes overly sweet. It just stays perfectly in that simple, elegant zone. And I absolutely love it. One that, you know, does not project very loudly, of course, and it doesn't last forever. Another vanilla that doesn't last forever and it doesn't project very loudly is um, this one right here. I'm gonna try to keep its little pendant kind of tucked back behind here so it doesn't clang the whole time. But this is a beautiful, very soft, elegant, timeless, I would call it a citrusy vanilla that's very quiet and meets that kind of quiet aesthetic, quiet luxury aesthetic. Some people might think it's too quiet luxury because it doesn't have the best performance, it doesn't have the greatest longevity, but when you can smell it, it's absolutely stunning. And this is a perfume that's going to smell good 10 years, 20 years from now, if I still own the bottle. It's not a screechy lemon and it certainly doesn't smell like cleaning products. It just has a very, very subtle touch of those lemony citruses. It's got tonka in here, so it has a little bit of that warmth the slightest hint, the slightest hint of a nuttiness without smelling overtly nutty. And I can, you know, get maybe four or five hours out of this, but I do have to wear a spray on clothes. One that I wanted for years and I ended up purchasing it because I got it for a good deal on Joma Shop. This is a tester bottle. It doesn't come with the cap, but I saved a lot of money and I will, if I still see it over um, on Joma Shop, I will link it below because I did save a lot of money. So another beautiful, timeless, elegant vanilla, in my opinion, that comes from a house that just screams luxury. It's not gonna be a house for everybody, but it is a house I have loved almost every single perfume in the line. I think one's a like, not a love, but all the, oh, and there, there's an oud in there that's a little too oudy for me, but I will say very, very well made. And the one that I chose, it was kind of hard to choose one, but the one I chose that fit this aesthetic perfectly is the Ruby in Vanilla Intense. Um, other perfumes I might like a little bit better, but they did not fit the quiet luxury. For example, Alexandrite and Patchouli, that's not a quiet perfume. It is, it's a beautiful perfume. It's one of my favorite fragrances, but it's not super quiet. Ruby and Vanilla um, Intense is one of the few perfumes that isn't very, very loud and bombastic and doesn't last forever. It has a quiet elegance to it. It is a vanilla, it would be a citrusy vanilla, and the citruses in here are not, you know, lemon or bergamot. Uh, I wanna say it's mandarin, so it has a subtle, a warmer, spicy citrus to it. I think there are velvet notes, there are beautiful woods in here. I know at least Gaillac wood is in here, and some beautiful, deep almond. So there's almond in here. It doesn't smell marzipan and it doesn't smell green. It's almost like the perfect middle of the road almond. An absolutely beautiful, timeless, stunning 
vanilla. And as long as you are comfortable with the way they sell their perfumes, they do not have a brick and mortar store and they, they have a website, but they don't sell from the website. I will list the instructions down below. You have to contact them through Facebook or um, through a DM through Instagram. They will send you an invoice and then they will ship your perfumes overseas. It's like two days. Unbelievable. I've, like I said, I've never had an issue, but that makes some people a little bit weary and I completely understand. So fortunately, there are other creators on this platform that have a store. I think Greta Beth here in the United States, and I want to say Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes over in the UK. They sell decants of this perfume so you can try before you buy. But I mean, this is such a beautiful, classic, elegant, quiet luxury vanilla that will last me forever. So for the next perfumes, we are really talking elegant fragrances. The first one was one of the most expensive perfumes I purchased and that was in my collection for a while. And I bought this a couple years ago and this is by the House of Raja. And I never wear this because I'm always waiting for a really special occasion. I thought it was so special and it was so expensive. I was waiting for that special occasion to wear it. And then when I was gathering up my perfumes for this video, I realized that's just nonsense. I spent a lot of money on this perfume. This perfume is timeless and I might as well wear it. Otherwise, it's just going to gather dust for the few times that I do go to really, really fancy parties or events where I want to wear something very, very luxurious, glamorous, but not, you know, blow people over. And the one I'm talking about is Lacme. Now, now this was inspired by an opera. And I think it was in Oman a couple of years ago. They opened their season with Lacme and Raja was commissioned to come up with a scent that would kind of embody the opera. I believe that he is a big lover of the opera and this is what he came up with. When the opera opened and you know, the curtains pulled back, the whole opera house was really infused or they were pumping this perfume, the fragrance from this perfume into the audience. So everybody got to experience the scent of Lacme and it is, I would call it a very, very fancy, aldehydic rose amber and then like all Raja fragrances it's a very very complex perfume it has a lot of notes it's going to open with some citruses it has some aldehyde so it's very sparkly it's very fresh a little bit citrusy but it never ever you know smells like a cleaning product lots of florals but to me the star of the show is a rose I want to say there's also a little bit of iris in here but to me, I get a lot more rose and it has this beautiful, soft, clean, warm amber, you know, in the base. It's a little bit earthy, just a little bit earthy, a little bit spicy. I want to say there's pink pepper in here. It wouldn't surprise me. It has that little bit of like a pink pepper zip, but it's never too much like in your face. And it's just this beautiful, elegant, timeless rose perfume. I know some people say they don't wear rose perfumes because they don't want to smell like an old lady. I don't know what that means. But to me, this does not smell at all vintage or dated. It just smells elegant. I will say some fragrances in this line do have a very much of a vintage flair to them. Not this. It's a little bit fresher. It's a little bit cleaner. It's clean, but it's not soapy. And that's from the aldehyde. So it has a nice pop of freshness and lightness and bubbliness. That's the word I'm looking for, effervescence, without smelling like straight up rose soap. Very, very pretty. And I made a pack with myself that I will be wearing this more. I will be wearing this on uh, work days too, you know, gentle and quiet, but I'm going to be wearing this more because it's too pretty just to sit and gather dust. Um, one that I've had in my collection for several months is called Jardin Iter from a luxury brand called Graham and Pot, and they are from the UK. And I would describe this as a dewy pink floral with a little splash or a little hint of a tart raspberry. Now this line was started over a hundred years ago, and I think it was Mr. Pot who started this line, and he used to sell textiles. So back in the day, the only way textiles would get distributed was on a ship and the journeys tend to be very long and ships tend to be very stinky. So he would wrap his textiles in handmade 
marmalade paper so that when the client or when the buyer would open their package, it wouldn't smell like a stinky old ship. It would smell lovely, like that zesty, beautiful marmalade paper that he wrapped everything in. So they have created several perfumes. I've only tried two, and I'm showing this one because it is, it's more of a springtime scent for me, but you know, if you live somewhere warmer, you could probably wear this year round, particularly if you're going somewhere nicer and the Southern Hemisphere is moving into the warmer months. They're moving into their spring. And another reason why I show this is that Pat has a coworker or a trainee that is getting married in October, and she asked me to pick out a perfume for her, and she really likes the flower jasmine, so I took about 20 perfumes I thought would be really good for her wedding that kind of featured really pretty florals. I made her decants and I sent them to her and I asked her what her favorites were. She had a great time smelling and I had some really, really expensive perfumes in the little collection I sent her and her top, this was in the top three. She loved Jardin Ether. So I don't know if she's going to choose this as her wedding scent. I haven't followed up. It's been about a week. But out of all the perfumes I sent her, this was definitely one of her favorites. It's very pink and the scent reflects that pinkness. So it has, whenever I think of a pink floral, I'm immediately thinking peonies. This one also has a fairly detectable rose, but the rose to me is pink and has dew on it. It's a dew covered pink rose and it has a cherry blossom accord. Sometimes, I like cherry blossom accords. Sometimes they can go a little bit into the shampoo-y zone. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing shampoo-y about this and it has a very fresh, like a sparkling raspberry, almost like a raspberry, like a crystalline raspberry, almost sprinkled on the top, all while maintaining a little sense of dewiness. It is, oh, it's absolutely stunning. And I think they finally have some dis sample sets or a discovery set on their website. I will link all that information down below. So the last two I'm going to show with my outfit and jewelry choices are, you know, I'm gonna show an Ormond Jane. Ormond Jane is literally the definition of quiet luxury. It's very, very difficult to choose a perfume. I originally thought I was gonna show Privé, and I grabbed what I thought was the Privé bottle, and I grabbed my second choice, which was actually this one here, Frangipani. Not Champaka that I show all the time. I love Champaka that's more of an everyday scent, an easy scent, a grab and go, you know, literally not offend anybody, but the one that just fits that quiet luxury aesthetic to me a little bit more is Frangipani. This is a Linden Blossom Muslim. Even though the name says Frangipani, I get a lot more Linden Blossom. And Linden Blossom to me, I used to have a Linden Blossom tree out in the front. It has a greenness. It smells green and honey, like a lime. So it's lime and honey. It's a lime honeyed blossom. It's very, very pretty. Whereas Frangipani, definitely that tropical yellow floral definitely takes a backseat to that linden blossom note that I definitely get more of. So you do have to like the note of lime because I do get kind of a very strong lime in the beginning, but it blends a little bit more in the florals as it dries down. This does not smell like a you know typical tropical floral. It does not smell beachy. And somewhere in the background, I do get um, a very, very, very light fruity sweetness, whether that's apricot or plum. It's very light, very um, subtle in the background. This one does wear lightly, but it just is kind of elegant and chic and timeless to me. Another, you know, perfume from a house that fits that quiet luxury aesthetic, and I want to smell more of their perfumes because they've come out with several since I got the Discovery um, set, and it's by the House of St. Rose. They're a cleanly formulated, you know, luxury brand from Australia, and the one I chose is called Juliet in White. This is like a little bit of a peppery, fruity tea fragrance with a beautiful, beautiful ambrette note and a crisp, clean sandalwood in the base. I don't have anything that smells like this, and everything about this line screams sustainability. So this is really sustainable luxury. The, bottle, the glass um, is recyclable. The ingredients they use are upcycled, most of them are upcycled, are responsibly sourced. They get their sandalwood from a single farm, I wanna say in Australia, that's indigenously owned. And they have complete transparency. They list everything on their website that is included in the fragrances. And the fragrances do smell very, very clean. Not soapy clean, not cleaning product, but they just smell like there's nothing, nothing heavy or artificial about them. I love this one. 
It could be a wedding scent, but to me, it's more about what I'm wearing today or maybe a crisp white button down. It would be great for lunches or work or any type of professional setting. So for my last wardrobe change, I am pairing these perfumes with a cashmere, a timeless cashmere sweater that I bought at least 10 years ago. It's not out of style and looks like I could have purchased it six months ago, but I purchased it more like 10 years ago. And I'm gonna be pairing that with my earring choice. I've still got the, uh, I've got the diamond stud, but I've paired that second diamond stud with a second beautiful jacket. It's almost like a climber. I'll see if I can zoom in or show a picture in the corner, but the jacket is called the live jacket. And again, it's modular. I have that second diamond solitaire in the jacket and I love it. So you can either wear it alone or you can wear it in your second pair of piercing like I did, like I said, because it's modular, the uh, combinations are endless. And the perfumes that I chose for this combination, oh my gosh, the first one I'm gonna choose is another vanilla, Dama Bianca, I never show this, but this is a beautiful, fluffy, sweet, fruity, floral, timeless, quiet, elegant vibe about it. The, the vanilla in here is non-gourmand, so it's for, it's a vanilla for my non-gourmand lovers. So it has a nice fruity, tart, citrusy opening that does not smell like a cleaning product. It has a little bit of malt that gives it a little bit of warmth and depth, but you don't smell like beer. And it has violet in here. Violet is sweet and violet is powdery. And all those notes combine, come together just to form a beautiful, timeless, fluffy, soft, sweet, slightly, fruity, powdery vanilla that just screams quiet luxury, timeless, I love it. I'm moving along a little quickly because the video is getting a little long. Perfume that I've never ever talked about is one of my most luxurious sandalwood, Santal Indian by Christian Provisano. I would say this is bordering on a gourmand. Some people might think it's so sweet it's gourmand. I don't. I don't think it is at all gourmand, but everybody has a different tolerance for the sweetness. To me, this is a, a beautiful, rich, creamy. This is that creamy type of sandalwood. It's not the sharp, clean one. It is creamy. Creamy sandalwood paired with a non-gourmand vanilla and saffron. So the saffron almost has a leathery, like a suede vibe, but it's not overly leathery and it's not overly spicy. This is beautiful, moderate wearing, quiet, soft, almost like it has a little bit of a cashmere in here. I wouldn't be surprised if this has a cashmere note or a cord because it's very warm, sweet, enveloping, slightly spicy. Oh, I love it. Um, the next one I'm gonna go for or go with is this one by M. Mikalif, another house that just screams luxury from France. And the one that I chose for today's video is a Pure Extreme, the Nectar version. This is definitely something that has a timeless quality to it, a timeless elegance to it, a quiet luxury to it. It could definitely be somebody's signature scent. It's a beautiful, soft, airy, musky floral. And there are several florals in here, but I mainly get rose, but I know there's magnolia and I want to say jasmine or orange blossom. So those are the florals in here, but they're very, very fluffy, they're soft, they're sweet, they're not too strong, and they're paired with this lovely kind of signature musk. Very understated, very kind of like Parisian chic, and it, it's not a beast. It wears on the lighter side, but I can get at least um, a half day with this one. And I think I'm going to end with, uh, quickly, with one of my favorite perfumes, Louis Rouge. This is the definition of quiet luxury. It is a a yummy, spicy vanilla, woody fragrance with some iris. The vanilla is non-gourmand. It has a beautiful cardamom note that's not over the top. Um, I get a woody note. I get a nice, like a cedar, maybe a sandalwood note. And it has iris, but it's not overly lipsticky and it's not overly powdery. It lasts a long time, but it's not very loud. And it's just, it could be a signature vanilla in you know anybody's collection, so that is it. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot how many perfumes I chose for this video. You know, this is only my second luxury video, so I wanted to show all these perfumes. If you have a favorite quiet luxury fragrance that was more of an investment for you, but worth every penny, and you don't have any regret purchasing it, let us all know in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody who always shows up for my videos, gives me a thumbs up and subscribes to my channel. I thank it from the bottom of my heart. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.